Hi guys and welcome back and welcome to the supplement inventory. Today we're going to be talking about antimicrobials specifically for yeast. If you didn't already see it, I did another video just like this going through my own inventory talking about antimicrobials for bacterial overgrowth or bacterial based dysbiosis. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out. But this video we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about yeast. Now, the first thing I want to say to preface this entire video similar to the other one is that killing the yeast is a very minor part of your journey if you have yeast overgrowth. So this would go for CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, colon-based yeast overgrowth, vaginal yeast overgrowth, thrush, no matter where you have yeast overgrowth, the question needs to be not how do I kill it, but the question needs to be why did I develop a yeast overgrowth in the first place? Usually it boils down to two primary things, and this is beyond the scope of today's video, but for what it's worth, usually it's because the bacterial microbiome in that location is not healthy and robust enough to inhibit yeast overgrowth. And number two is that the immune system might not be fully capable of managing the terrain and yeast overgrowth. Those would be the two primary factors with a heavy, heavy emphasis on the bacterial piece of it. So for what it's worth, there's going to be things that kill yeast, but most of your focus, like 90% of your focus, if you have yeast, needs to be on boosting and nurturing your good microbes, like lactobacilli, and making sure that your immune system is happy and balanced and not inflamed and not pissed off and able to manage your microbial ecosystem. So without further ado, let's talk about some of those antimicrobials. Again, this is like 10% of the journey, but it is a relevant part of the journey for a lot of people. By far, my absolute number one product that I like to use for yeast overgrowth in my patients is this really stupidly named product, Formula SF722 from Thorn Research. So these are little tiny gel caps about that big, and these are undolenic acid. This is an extract from coconut oil that has anti-yeast capabilities. You're gonna notice a theme, by the way, that coconut comes up a lot today in this, in this video. But this is a, a bunch of little gel caps with undolenic acid in them. And what this does, it doesn't necessarily kill the yeast as far as we are aware right now. What it does is it helps turn these big honking candida creatures into their single-celled versions. So it helps control the type of candida you have, not necessarily the quantity, and it doesn't kill them, but it takes the hyphal form of candida and encourages it to shift back to its single-celled yeast form. So it's like the equivalent of, you know, if you had this like giant, um, I, I'm kind of picturing almost, what is the dog that guards the gate of hell? Um, Serbius or Super, somebody comment down below. I don't even know. I should know this from Laura Olympus, but I don't off the top of my head. But it's kind of like, you know, you have this big honking giant monster thing of candida. And if you can convert that three headed dog into a little chihuahua or a little Yorkie poo, it is so much more manageable and it's so much easier for your microbiome and your immune system to get online and put the kibosh on it. So this is not necessarily antimicrobial and a killer as far as we're aware, but it will make the candida so much more manageable and it really, really helps with symptoms of yeast overgrowth and it can start to control the situation way, way quicker than a lot of other products that I have seen work. So undolenic acid, formula SF722, I really like. You'll notice, however, I have some stuff from Microbiome Labs. I have MegaGuard, I have Megaspore, but I don't use their version of this product. The main reason is because they combined it with propolis, which I also have on my shelves. It's over here somewhere with the immunomodulatory stuff. So I do carry propolis. It's not that I'm anti-propolis. And it does have some anti-candida effectiveness. The thing is that propolis is very precious to the bees and they only make a little bit of it. So I feel really guilty and really yucky from a sustainability standpoint taking a lot of propolis and using it willy-nilly. So I prefer to keep these two products separate. I use a lot of undolenic acid, but I only use propolis every now and then. Maybe once or twice a year I have an occasion to prescribe propolis. And when I need it, I'm glad that I have it. But it's something that I really try to use sparingly out of the sustainability and kind of courtesy to the bees because I don't want to take that resource from them unnecessarily. So that's why I just choose to not use the Microbiome Labs product. 
you know, on the surface, it looks like a lovely product, but I don't want to take something that is not sustainable to keep harvesting. So that being said, SF722, fabulous product. Usually I dose that five gel caps three times a day. And oftentimes I will have people start up kind of slowly. So I'll start with one capsule three times a day, then two, then three, then four, then five. And then most people end up hunkering down at five gel capsules three times a day for a period of a couple of months. Usually that does a really good job all on its own. But if I need to add a little bit more umph to the anti-candida support beyond probiotics and prebiotics, because again, the health of your bacteria will dictate whether or not you can inhibit yeast. So aside from that, as far as direct killing and direct anti-candida effect, the other products that I use quite a bit of are caprylic acid. So this is the one I just use. It's Caprin from Biotics Research. Caprylic acid is also derived from coconut and it has anti-yeast activity. I think it smells really nice. I think it smells very coconutty. I had one patient who opened it up, took one capsule and could not take any more of it because she thought it smelled like vomit. So if you're exceptionally sensitive to, to the smell of vomit, apparently one person out there thought that that was the case. So I would just caution you, like if you have a history of disordered eating or if you very easily lose your cookies or if you had really severe morning sickness and that's kind of triggering for you, maybe don't do caprylic acid. But other than that, most people think it's fine to take, it's not unpleasant and it usually works pretty well. Oftentimes I will dose that 500 milligrams or one capsule three times a day. You're probably noticing a pattern here. And with antimicrobials, honestly, I actually dose them with food most frequently. I don't think it makes that huge of a difference to take it on an empty stomach and it's a pain in the butt to do that. So I just tell people to take it with meals most frequently. So caprylic acid and undulanic acid are both derived from coconut. To keep up that kind of theme of the antimicrobials derived from coconut, I'll share one more, which is monolaurin, or this is a brand name, lauricidin. I like monolaurin. It has anti-yeast effect. It has antiviral effect. It seems to disrupt biofilms. It has a bit of an antimicrobial, antibiotic effect. But primarily, I'm going to use this for yeast in the GI tract. And what I like about this one, as opposed to other types of uh, monolaurin, why I like this particular product, even though it's a little more expensive, is because it comes in these little pellets. And those little pellets are so easy to dose. I can have somebody start with one little pellet twice a day, and that's where they start. And then they can gradually up the dose, as opposed to monolaurin that's in a capsule, and then you have to just start with one capsule. And that could be too much for a lot of people to start out. So I actually like that these come in the weird little pellets. What you do is usually I'll just have people like take a scoop or take the couple of pellets, put it in their hand, pop them in your mouth. Don't chew them because they will taste like soap and you'll hate me a lot, but just pop them in your mouth and then take a swig of water and then gulp it down. They'll kind of float on the water so it feels a little funny the first time, but you can just gulp them down with water after you put them in your mouth. So lauricidin, I also use quite a bit for yeast. Going up to the top shelf, I mentioned this in my other video, but black seed oil or black cumin seed oil is another one that I like for antibacterial effect as well as anti-yeast effect. And similarly, it has some immune balancing properties to it. So if somebody has a very histamine driven or phlegmy presentation to their, their symptoms, I might use this a little bit more readily. What I would caution you with though is that I've had one patient who said that it seemed to aggravate her gastritis a little bit. So this, and I mentioned before, oregano oil, which has some anti-yeast activity as well. These two, I would probably not lean on if you have any sort of gastritis or stomach irritation. But other than that, they are nice anti-yeast compounds. So sometimes I will use those. That will segue into the ADP oregano conversation. Again, I talked about this in my last video with regards to bacterial overgrowth particularly hydrogen sulfide, but it does also have anti-yeast and antiviral effectiveness to it, and I believe anti-parasitic. So for this, this is an emulsified oregano tablet that's delayed release. So instead of getting into the stomach and opening up a gel capsule where it's gonna have most of its activity in the stomach, this delayed release tablet should get through at least to part of the small intestine and perhaps even the colon and have more of an effectiveness there. Usually I'm dosing this one or two tablets two or three times a day. Again, starting people off a little bit on the lower side and then gradually ramping up to try to prevent any sort of die-off reaction. 
So I do rather like this product as it, uh, as it compares to other oregano products out there. And then the last one specifically for yeast, again, gr granted, there's a lot of effectiveness to come from probiotics and prebiotics. Biofilm disruption may or may not be a thing for yeast. I'm not entirely sure if I believe that that's a huge component for yeast. But uh, Pau de Arco is another herb that is known for killing yeast. I don't use it nearly as frequently as the coconut-derived products like undulinic acid, caprylic acid, and monohlorin. But say if I had somebody with yeast overgrowth and they had a negative reaction to coconut, they couldn't take coconut. This could be a good alternative. Or say, you know, somebody got some mileage out of this undulinic acid product, but lorisine was too strong and was giving them die-off reactions, and caprylic acid they thought smelled like vomit and they hated it. This could be another one that I layer in with the undulinic acid in that case to get a little bit more anti-yeast effect. So it's not my top choice, but it does work, and it is pretty helpful. That's, um, that is another herbal option. And then last but not least, I will bring up that berberine also has some anti-yeast effect to it. Similarly to what I mentioned in my other video, I'm just going to mention, it's not my primary mode of killing yeast, but what's nice about berberine is that it has metabolic and anti-inflammatory active action as well as immunomodulatory action. And that's why, if you noticed, I pulled this off the shelf behind me because I organized my shelves. So I've got prebiotics mostly on the top, antimicrobials on this shelf, prokinetics, uh, digestive enzymes and supportive products, probiotics, and I've got some like gut healing stuff down there like leaky gut. So I organize it by category of item. It's not alphabetical, it's not by brand. And I keep the berberine over with the immunomodulatory and anti-inflammatory stuff. I don't keep it here with the antimicrobial stuff because I don't use it for that purpose a ton. But if I had somebody with yeast overgrowth who also had uh, some symptoms of metabolic syndrome, like hypertension, central adiposity or central obesity, um, you know, type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, those things in conjunction with dysbiosis or yeast overgrowth would make me think a lot more quickly that I want to use berberine. Similarly, berberine has an immunomodulatory or immune balancing action to it. So if I had somebody with yeast overgrowth who also was very histamine intolerant and Th2 dominant and phlegmy and boogery and mucusy, and they had a very allergic presentation to their symptoms, I might reach for berberine in addition to undulinic acid because I know that the berberine is going to act on their immune system and that can strengthen the immune system so it can manage yeast more effectively while also having some light antimicrobial action on the yeast itself. So I do like berberine, it's just I don't keep it with the critter killers, I keep it over here with my immunomodulatory stuff. And similarly, you'll notice propolis, I keep over here with the immunomodulatory stuff more so than the antimicrobials because I tend to see those two compounds stand out more in the immunomodulatory realm as opposed to just killing shit realm. Um, so yeah, so that's really the, the run through on the yeast products. Like I said, if you couldn't tell from this video, undulinic acid SF722 is by far my favorite anti-yeast product. I do use some caprylic acid, monolaurin, black seed, berberine, Pau de Arco. I do use some of those, but I, I kind of mix up the secondary product a lot, depending on the person. But I almost always start people with undulinic acid if they have yeast overgrowth. And then the nice thing is that this is very, very safe and you can take undulinic acid I mean, theoretically, you could just take it every day for the rest of your life. It's not like you can overdose on the stuff. It's not dangerous. It's not irritating to the stomach or caustic or irritating. It's very safe. It's very well tolerated. And as a bonus, it almost never causes die-off reactions. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.